Hello Rap Bears, it's Joe Plays Games. Welcome to the Host Arc Settings tutorial for PS4 and Xbox One. It's exactly the same guys. I have done three videos on this in the past. In fact, my first video I've done on this last January is my biggest video to date with 79,000 views. A while since I've done it, they've added a brand new set of tabs and even the updated one I've done a few months later only had these three tabs, it didn't have the rest. So I'm going to be giving you the lowdown, the tutorial on all of these, exactly what they all mean and what they do. Because it's so big, we're going to break it down into two separate videos. Right, so let's get started with the basics. You've got your choice of map, the arc, scorched earth or the centre map. Pretty simple. Then we've got dino difficulty. The higher the level, the higher level dinosaurs you get. Now it's normally set at 0.2 when you first start the game. And that will only give you levels up to maybe 40, 45 dinosaurs. So if you want the max level dinosaurs you can find, you need to put it up to 1.0 at least. Enable global voice chat. This means that if you're talking on a server, anyone can hear you across the server. So click that on if you want to be able to talk to people all over the server. Otherwise click it off if you don't want that on. This is mainly used for people that host their own servers, as if you're in a party on your non-dedicated server, you can only have 7 friends join anyway and they can't be too far away from you. Enable proximity text chat. This basically means that you can only talk to people by text when they're close to you. So again, not a problem if you're hosting a non-dedicated session, but if you've got your own dedicated server, you may want to turn this off, otherwise people will never be able to see server chat. Then we've got a couple basic ones. Note fire player left, note fire player joined. It literally just tells you whether they've joined the server or not. Then we've got admin login. Admin login lets you know if anyone's using any commands or cheats to spawn stuff in or do anything to the world. By clicking it off you won't see what's happening, by clicking it on you will. Because I have such a big team of admins that do stuff for me on my servers like build and create amazing creations, we have this turned off as it can be quite annoying having it pop up in the left hand corner while you're playing the game. Enable crosshair, simply put it enables a crosshair. If you turn it off, it'll be a bit harder to attack or target enemies. Full Snow HUD. If you click this one on, you won't be able to see other players' tribes or even their name. This is a really hardcore thing to put on. Only do it if you're planning on having like a PvP server. It can be really frustrating not knowing whose creature's who, whether or not it's a tamed creature or not. Disable loot crates. All the beacons that drop loot crates and in the caves, if you click this on, there will be no items in them caves. Also, with the difficulty level, the higher it is, the higher level loot you get. So again, if you have it really low, you'll get low level loot. But if you want the highest level loot you can get, then you need to make sure it's up high. 1.0 is actually the max that the game recommends. So for loot and difficulty level, that is the one they want you to use, 1.0. You can lower it if you really want an easier experience, but that is the one that everyone talks about getting perfect tame dinosaurs at a certain high level. Then we've got hardcore mode. Simply put, you die, you have to start again. You lose access to all your items and your tames. Your experience points will go back down and you will have to start all the way back down from 0 to 1. So again, only use it if you're planning a hardcore server. PvE mode turns it off from PvP. If you don't have this ticked on, players can kill you, so if your friends join your world, they may be able to do damage to you or your base or your dinosaurs. Clicking that on stops that from happening and it becomes a player versus everything mode. Disable friendly fire. Having this off means that you can actually harm your dinosaurs by accident by either hitting them with weapons or shooting them. Click this on to stop that happening. And it also works for tribe as dinosaurs as well. Show map player location. On official servers you can't necessarily see your location when you look at the map. By clicking this off you can by clicking this on you will always see your player on the map. No tribute downloads. This stops anyone from summoning any of the bosses. You won't be able to teleport to the Broodmother's Arena, the Megapithecus, the Dragon or the Manticore on Scorched Earth. If you do want your friends to be able to go teleport or do anything like that, make sure you tick it off. 
No survivor downloads. This stops anyone from downloading a previous character they have saved and uploaded to the servers. You can download your characters from other servers. I've got a tutorial on that, so go and check that one out. No item downloads. This stops anyone downloading any items from any other servers. Recently, Ark have made it available for anyone to download anything on certain cluster servers. Even Scorched Earth items on the island, or even island items on Scorched Earth. By clicking this on, you will stop that from happening. No dino downloads. Again, you can store your dinosaurs into the obelisk to take with you. But by having this on, people won't be able to download their dinosaurs or creatures onto your world. A very famous trolling tactic is for people to join up to other people's non-dedicated world when they're open, convince them to go to the obelisk to bring them in something cool, and then they bring in like two or three giggers and wreck havoc. So be careful again with this having it off. You may want to put it on if you don't trust everyone on the server. Right, next let's talk about sliders. I just reset it there just to make sure that everyone can see everything that's going on. This is how you make certain parts of the game easier or harder. If you have dino damage up all the way to the top there, or you put in a really high number, dinosaurs will do a lot more damage to you. If you don't want them to do anywhere near that kind of damage, pull it very low. If you put it at zero, they won't do any damage to you. Player damage, exactly the same thing. If you pull it up really high, or you put in a massive stupid number, you'll be smashing dinosaurs with just one punch. If you put it really low, you won't be doing any damage to them. Structural damage is the amount of damage wooden fence spikes do. Or other traps that you can lay. If you have it up high, they'll do more damage. If you have it low, they'll do no damage. Player resistance. Now this one's different. You'd assume that if you put it up here, it would mean you, your player would be invincible. But it's the other way round. The higher you put player resistance, the easier it is for your player to take damage. If you want your player to be god, put it all the way to the left. This means you won't get any damage at all. Same thing for Dino Resistance, if you pull it all the way to the right, you can take damage very easily, and if you pull it all the way to the left, you'll take absolutely no damage. So find a good balance of exactly what you want. Structure Resistance is your bases, your builds, your building materials. The higher it is, the more damage it can take, the lower it is, it will take absolutely no damage. It's really good if you've got just a good friendly server where you're trying to build stuff, you don't have to worry about any parts of your base being um, having to be repaired over time. XP multiplier. To gain extra levels when you level up, you can put it all the way to the right. Again, put it all the way to the left, and anything you do, like crafting, scavenging, hunting, you will get less XP. Now generally, I have this quite high. I'll have it on a three, maybe even a four sometimes. Just so I can level up quickly and unlock all the items I want. Taming speed. The lower the taming speed on the left, the slower it will be to tame something. If you want to tame creatures really quickly, putting it on a free is good. But again, I like to have it really high so I don't have to wait hours to tame a creature. We're going to put it on 10. Structure damage repair cooldown. This is the amount of time that it takes in between repairing your builds. You'll notice that over time your building can take damage, even if nothing's attacking it. By having this really low, there's no limit into how many times you can repair it. If you have it up high, you have to wait that amount of time before you can repair the item again. So particularly for PvP servers, they will have this fairly high so people can't just keep repairing their buildings while being attacked. Dino turret damage. This is the amount of damage Plant Species X does. It fires torpor bursting little balls of slime. The higher it is, the more damage they do. The lower it is, the less damage they do. Dino harvesting damage is the amount of damage you do to harvestable goods like trees, rocks. The higher it is, the more damage you'll do and it'll be quicker to actually gather the items. I always have mine around 6, but again I know lots of people that put it up to 10. 
Next we've got the harvesting amount. So every time you hit a tree, every time you hit a rock, if you have this all the way up to the right, you'll get more resources. Right now there's an evolution event running where you can get two times the amount of harvest. Again though, I like to do lots of builder things, I've got lots of creative people on my server, so we have this quite high. Player character water drain. If you put this all the way to the bottom, you'll never have to drink, you won't have to worry about dehydrating. If you want to make the game super hard, put it all the way to the right and you'll be drinking every two seconds. I generally just have it there. Player character food drain, exactly the same thing. Have it up really high and you'll eat loads and loads and loads. Have it really low and you won't need to eat as much. Dino character food drain, this is really important for taming. If you have this low like you would think you would so your dinosaur doesn't have to eat as much, it affects taming speeds. It doesn't matter how fast the taming speed is, if you have this all the way to the left, you will never tame a creature. It needs to eat the food that you're putting in its inventory. So for that reason people put this up quite high so they can tame creatures quicker. Player character stamina drain, same thing again, you put it up really high, you'll lose stamina really quickly. So having it really low means you'll run out of stamina almost never. Again, I have that about there. Dino character stamina drain, same thing as the player character stamina drain. Player character health recovery, all the way to the right and you'll gain health quicker after being attacked. If you put it all the way to the left, you won't ever gain any health. Once you get attacked, that's it, you'll be attacked and attacked until you die. Same thing for Dino Character Health Recovery. And then lastly on this page we're looking at player harvesting damage. This is the amount of damage you do when you're gathering resources. So again, if you have this really high, you'll gather resources super duper quick. If you have it really low, it may take two, three or four hits to take something down. So a good combination, if you don't want to be too grindy, is to have a player harvesting damage up to 6, the dino harvesting damage up to 6, and make sure that the harvest amount you get lots of it when you gather these materials. Right, next up we're going to look at actually world. Rules we'll look at in a separate video alongside stats and more, but for now I want to show you what the stats are on world. Day cycle speed, this will govern how many times it changes from day to night. If you have this all the way to the right, it will change from day to night really super duper quickly. Generally lots of people that I know like to have daytime on quite a lot, so we put that a little bit lower than the normal setting of one. And the same thing goes for daytime speed, if you want daytime speed to go by really quickly you put it to the right, if you want it to go slowly you put it all the way to the left. If you put both of these all the way to the left, it'll always be daytime. But again, we want a little bit of variety in there. Nighttime speed. And again, if you don't want to play the game completely in night sometimes, you can turn this up and it will go super duper quick. Otherwise, I usually put it around the 1.8 mark. Spoiling time. The higher this number, the longer it takes items to spoil. So things like eggs, meat, these will all spoil really super duper quick if you have it all the way to the left. I normally have this at 1.2 and the same thing goes for item decomposition time. That is the items and tools that you might drop or anything in your inventory. Same thing goes for item decomposition time. That is the items in your inventory that you might drop when you die or anything you actually drop on the ground. If you have item decomposition time too far to the right, it means it can crash your server occasionally. If you've got lots of people playing on it and they're dropping lots of items, them items don't necessarily just disappear quickly and that creates extra pressure, extra trouble for your server. So never have that too high. Oh. And the same thing goes with corpse decomposition time. Don't have that too high otherwise it will take forever for corpses to disappear. So we're talking about no resource radius now, this is the amount of things that can spawn around the player, whether it be rocks, resources, trees, etc. 
So if you're building a massive base and you're fed up with trees and plants respawning all the time around you, have this all the way to the right, and the same thing goes for structures too, have it all to the way to the right and things will not spawn that quickly. If you pull it all the way to the left though, your things will spawn massively. You'll get trees and rocks constantly spawning as soon as you have harvested them. So be careful with that one. Balance it between what you need to actually build a good base, enough nothing around it, versus what you actually might need for resources. If you have things really high, you will have to go ages and ages away to go and get resources. I personally keep it just under one. Crop growth spread. You can grow crops, you can grow veg and fruit and all sorts. If you put that all the way up to the right, then they'll grow a lot quicker. If you put it all the way to the left, then they won't grow at all. Crop decay speed. Again, the same thing. If you put it all the way to the right, the crops will decay quicker. If you put it all the way to the left, they won't decay at all. So that means you can harvest them whenever you want, rather than worrying that the plants are going to die or they're going to lose the, the fruits or the seeds that they're dropping. Baby imprinting stat scale multiplier. These are getting a bit more complicated now, guys. When you get into taming and you start having eggs, you can hatch these eggs into little baby dinosaurs. There is something called imprinting, where you can basically give them a buff or um, extra points in their skills. When you've got a small dinosaur baby, you need to go and give it lots of cuddles and you'll get lots and lots of high stats from it. So that when it's fully grown, it will have lots and lots of good stats. If you put the baby imprinting stat scale multiplier all the way to zero, this basically disables the system, so you don't have to go and do that. But you won't get any levels added to the creatures that you're actually raising. If you put it all the way to the right, you will get better stats from the creatures that you are cuddling every few minutes. Now it depends what the creature is, and it depends on certain other settings, but sometimes you have to go back to your dinosaur a couple times every two hours. Other dinosaurs, you don't have to do it for eight to 12 hours. It really just depends on the creature. Now you've got an option here to turn it off as well. If you click that, it means that you don't have to do the imprinting at all. But if you leave it on, it means that you can imprint on your dinosaurs and make them have better levels. If you have this all the way to the right, you'll be pooping all over the place. If you have it all the way to the left, you'll never poop. You need to have some sort of poop for fertilizer. If you have late egg interval all the way to the right, it means there's going to be a greater gap in between laying eggs. So if you want lots and lots of eggs, make sure you put this all the way down quite low. Mating interval. Now again, if you put this all the way high, it means your creatures cannot mate as quickly as you might want them to. And if you have it low like this, it means you can mate them whenever you want. You can literally have a little crash, a little farm of baby dinosaurs running around. Again, I'll normally put that at 0.3. Egg hatch speed. If you want your eggs to hatch a lot quicker, put this one to the right. If you want a bit slower, pull it to the left. If you put it all the way to zero, they will not hatch. Baby mature speed. Again, the same thing. If you want your baby to grow up quickly, put it over to the right. If you want it to grow slowly, put it to the left. If you have it all the way to the right, you will need to imprint on it a lot sooner. Imprinting is a little bit complicated. I'm going to be going through that in a separate video. So we're not going to muck around too much with that. We'll just put it in the middle. And baby food consumption speed is the same sort of thing. How quickly it eats food and then how quickly it grows. Now we've got harvest health. This is the amount of health that... the plant has before getting its yield. If you put harvest health all the way to the right it means you'll have to hit it for many many more times to get materials out of it. So if you do this all the way to the right it may take you a few moments to take down a tree but you will get more resource from it. I personally like having this quite low. Again I'm a speed player I like to do things quickly so generally I'll put it up to like 0.3. This means that usually it only takes one hit and you'll have taken down a rock or a tree. But it's up to you how you play your game. Resources respawn period. Now they're quite similar to the no resource radius on structures and player. 
except this affects resources everywhere. So you might go to one area, clear it out, leave and come back another day and if you've got this all the way up here you may find that things haven't grown back yet. Likewise if you put this all the way to the left things will grow back almost instantaneously. So again balance it between what you need. If you put this all the way to the right you're going to have to cuddle your dinosaurs, your babies a lot more. So you'll have to do that a lot more to get the imprinting quality you want. If you have it quite low it means you won't have to cuddle them as much. So if you haven't got lots of time maybe keep it on a low setting. Baby Cuddle Grace Period Multiplier. Now again these can be a bit confusing. I will go over these in a separate video to show you how to tame. But there are occasions when you can delay the baby from having a cuddle. If you put this all the way to the right you can make that space of time longer and bigger. If you put it to the left it means that you would start losing imprinting quality. Imprinting is the stats. So having this higher means that you'll get more of a chance to go up to the baby and actually give it the cuddles it needs and then you won't miss out on any imprinting. But if you have it really super duper low, you may miss out. And then we've got the baby cuddle lose imprint quality speed multiplier. Good God, these are long. If you miss out on the cuddle with your dinosaur, having this up really higher means you'll lose a lot of your stats that you're trying to gain. So having it low is the best option. Allow anyone baby imprint cuddle. Simply put, anyone can go up to the baby and imprint it or cuddle it. It doesn't just have to be you. It's usually anyone in your tribe can now do it. So there we go. That is the first two pages I want to show you. General and world. I am going to show you rules, I'm going to show you stats and more in the next video. And definitely stay tuned because I promise I am going to be taking care of the next set. If you've got any questions hit me up in the comment section and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.